Hello, everyone. I'm Connor Kennedy, and today I'm going to be presenting the use of code January 2023 Silver Problem 3 solution. Uh, problem's called Move Root. So in this problem, we have Bessie on an infinite number line, and we want to figure out her route, which way she went. But the issue is we only know how many times she crossed some certain points. So for instance, in the sample input, uh, this is all that we're given. We know that she went two times past this first point and four times past the second point. Um, but we don't actually know which way she went. And as it turns out, there's only one possible path for her to have gone. She could have gone left first, left again, or sorry, right first, right again, then left, then right, then left, then left. So that's the only possible route for her to have gone. Um, and we, given these numbers of times that she's uh, gone past these certain points, we want to find out uh, what's the what's a possible path she could have taken um, such that the number of times she turns around is minimized. So we can see in this instance that she turned around three times, once there, once there, and once there. So before we start solving the problem, let's see if we can gain a more intuitive understanding of it and a better way to visualize it. Let's do that on the second sample, which is 244. Four. So in this, uh, in this sample, um, Bessie goes past the first point two times, goes past the second point four times, and goes past the third point four times as well. So since Bessie is traveling past these points, uh, but we don't really know her direction. Let's just represent these travels as lines. So uh, for the two points, we draw two lines because Vessi might go, Vessi is guaranteed to go along these lines twice. For the four, you draw four lines. And then for the other four, you also draw four lines. Note that we can create valid, a valid solution with this by simply just connecting the ends of these lines. So Bessie starts here, let's say, and we connect this to this, and then we connect this, and then we can just keep connecting lines until we create a solution. So in this case, uh, we connected it to make the sample solution, which is uh, first we go R, 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 then LL, then R, R, then LL. So yeah, this is just uh, one way we can visualize it. But as it turns out, this is a very convenient way to visualize this, because in the problem, we're tasked with minimizing the number of times Bessie turns around. But in our visualization, the number of times she turns around is the number of these kind of caps that we put on the ends of the uh, lines. Like here, you know, she went from going right to going left. So we have this kind of cap here and similarly here and here. So in this solution, we know she turned around three times. Let's see if we can use this to figure out when these caps or these turnarounds are required. So if we look at this, uh, the span between two and six, we can see that we can only draw two lines from the two and the six. So we can draw one here and we can draw one here. But all other times we have to we have to put a cap because there's no place for this to go. If we want it to go somewhere over here, there's nothing left for it to do. So that means that we have to put a cap here and similar for this one. However, when we're going from the six to the six, then we don't have to put any gap caps because we know that we can just draw the lines between them. And since we want to minimize the number of caps, then it's always best to draw these lines. And when we go from the six to the four, then that means that uh, we can match up four of these at least. But we always know that we can't uh, we can't match up the other two to anything in the four. So that means that we have to put a cap here. And finally, from the four to the zero, since there's nothing here, uh, we can pretend there's a zero. Then we have to put caps on all of these since there is nowhere for Bessie to keep going straight. And we see that in this case, uh, this gives us a, a solution with one, two, three, four, five different turnarounds, different caps. And five is the optimal solution for this. So we can see that there's kind of a simple rule for replacing these turnarounds. Whenever uh, two adjacent numbers are different, 
then we know we must put a turnaround. If the first number is larger than the second number, then we must put a cap or a turnaround on that one, since then there is no other way to connect it. And if the second number is larger than the first, then we must put a turnaround from going from left to right. So now we have kind of a visual idea of what to do, but we need to actually get our solution. And the solution wants us to print out a list of all the directions that Bessie moves in. So that doesn't really work well with our just visualization because while we know where the turnarounds are, we don't really know when Bessie does them at all. So let's figure that out. So since the solution wants us to uh, find which ways Bessie goes, why don't we just simulate Bessie? So we start her off right here, uh, or I guess right here, at the beginning of the first, uh, the first detector or whatever, and then Bessie moves this way first, and then uh, since we have to eventually go to all of the all of the sensors or all the points, then we just keep moving in a straight line. And we want to move in a straight line anyways, because it's bad to turn around. So we keep moving in a straight line until we don't have to, or we have to not. So we keep moving. And we go here, and we find our first turnaround, or what might be our first turnaround. We haven't actually determined that yet. But how we can determine this is actually we can look at, uh, we can look at these counts here. So we have a 6 here and a 4 here. That means that we'll have to turn around at some point anyways to get to be able to uh, get this cap. So why not do it right now? So if we see that a number is larger than the next one, then we automatically do a turnaround. So here we do a six, or we do a turnaround right there. And uh, one important thing that you wanna do is you'll wanna actually uh, keep track of how many times Vesti has gone across each one. Or in my case, what I did is I just uh, erase these or I just replace these with the number of times Bessie has remaining to go on each one. So in this case, we only have one left here. We have five left here. Uh, we have four left here because Bessie's gone on two of them and we still have four left here. So we can keep simulating the movement. So it goes there. And now this is uh, four. And once again, we have another situation where our current one is at four, but our next one is at one. So since we have to do a turnaround at some point, we should do a turnaround now. So we do it now. And now this becomes three. And uh, we keep going and now this becomes three. We don't have to do anything if the numbers are different in the other direction, because as you can see, we go from three to four here, but that means we shouldn't turn around since if we do turn around, then it's just gonna become even more the difference. Because when you do turn around, it essentially decreases the current number by two instead of just like keeping them the same. Uh, because we're essentially overlapping the current segment instead of uh, taking one away from the next segment. So now we go here, and this is three. And then we look at the next one, uh, which we said to be zero. And that's pretty convenient because then we could just use our same comparison. And we know that three is greater than zero, so we do a turnaround. And we keep kind of doing this. I'm going to stop changing all the numbers now. We keep kind of doing this until we see that this number is greater. Then we turn around, we see the number is greater. Then we turn around and go all the way back to one. And then at this point, uh, Bessie has nowhere left to go because we've returned to the starting point. So that's the idea of our solution. So we can simulate where Bessie goes. And we turn around Bessie when the current segment's uh, count is greater than the next segment's count, because that kind of like equalizes them by doing that turnaround. So let's try it on this solution, which is one of the sample solutions. So all we're given is two, four, four. And we don't really know anything outside of that. So I'm not even gonna draw the visualization here. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, do the, simulation like here. So for this one, we start with the segment at two and we decrease this to one, I'm just gonna cross it out. And then since this number is not less than the next number, we keep going, this is three. And we keep going again, which is three. 
And now since this number is zero, uh, this number is greater than the next number. So we need to turn around. And now this becomes two since we went over the same another time. Uh, we keep going since uh, this number is less than this number. So we don't turn around. And now since two is greater than one, we turn around. So this becomes one and we keep going. Uh, this becomes one. And since one is greater than zero, we turn around. So this becomes zero. We keep going. This becomes zero. And we keep going. And this becomes zero. And uh, now we're kind of done because Bessie has nowhere else to go. So yeah, that's the general idea of our solution. We kind of do a simulation here. So is this going to be fast enough? Well, since we're simulating exactly one step for every time Bessie moves, uh, this uh, simulation is going to be exactly equal to the sum of all AI which is going to be fast enough given the limits of the problem. So here's the source code for this problem. As you can see, it's very short, and that's because our uh, simulation is pretty simple, uh, although the ideas leading up to this are not as simple. So let's walk through it. Um, this is in C++, so if you're using another language, then you'll have to adapt the code. So first of all, we start off with reading in the numbers. Um, interestingly, interestingly, in the problem, uh, it is zero index, or zero index, yeah. Um, but here we have it one indexed, and that's just for some convenience, because in the case where Vessi is going back to the very start, then Vessi won't be able to. Vessi, uh, if you try and look at the next one, then you'll be looking at the index negative one, which will cause an error. So it, we keep it one index so that we're able to look at the next one past zero. So we start off our simulation with the, we have two variables here that we keep, uh, position and the direction. And we start off position as one, uh, since that's where Bessie starts. And we start direction off as one. And direction is going to be one if Bessie is moving to the right and negative one if we're moving to the left. So it kind of represents the offset of the direction. So now we continuously loop until the current count is zero, while the array position is zero, uh, greater than zero, I mean. And this is because once it hits zero, then we'll know that Bessie has nowhere else to go because the current segment she's on has already been traveled as many times as we want. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's guaranteed that you'll never have any, uh, any remaining places to go if the current one's zero. And if you do, you probably got stuck, but... Um, that's probably due to a programming error because that shouldn't be possible for our logic. So uh, first thing we do every step is we print out the position or the direction because that's what uh, we want as our output. And then we subtract one from our count so that we're able to tell how many more times we need to turn around. And then we do a simple comparison here. If a po position plus direction, and this position plus direction represents the next uh, the next point, if this is less than the array of the current position, that means that we need to do some turnaround to kind of equalize it. So we set direction to negative direction, and we don't really need to move anywhere because the position stays the same. We're still uh, turning around on the same segment. Um, otherwise, then we just move by adding the direction of the position. And this is like the benefit of using one and negative one for direction is that it's very simple to turn around. And it's very simple to move. And yeah, that's the entire code, which is really crazy. Uh, very few use of code problems, especially in like higher levels like silver, are going to be this short. Um, but yeah, so that's the solution for this problem. Uh, thank you for watching this video.